Forgettable Bean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Hensel Co-op. I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Edible Bean School. Today I'm at the Huron Research Station, catching up with Dr. Peter Sikama, weed researcher, University of Guelph, Ridgetown campus. Peter, thanks for stopping by. Hey, you're most welcome. Hey, I want, uh, it's a special day for me and you to talk. Um, you've announced your retirement after 30 years of weed research. Um, and along the way, you've got yourself inducted into the Ontario Agricultural Hall of Fame. Um, congratulations on a, an incredible research career. Thank you very much, Bern. I've really enjoyed uh, my position at the University of Guelph Ridgetown campus. And uh, if I can help a farmer uh, in terms of improving his weed management on the farm even a little bit, uh, I've succeeded. Yeah. Now, we can't let you go without uh, sort of tapping into some of those thoughts on weed control that you've, uh, you've, you've accumulated over the years and those insights. And hey, let, let's start with, uh, I guess, you know, weed control in edible beans and their return on investment. I mean, you know, it really is important in edibles. It is. And uh, of the five crops that I work on, dry beans, corn, soybeans, spring cereals, and winter wheat, edible beans are the most sensitive to weed interference. And the return on investment is obviously, obviously going to be field specific. That's going to be determined by the weed density, the weed species composition, weather patterns in each individual year. But in the research that we've done, farmers can get up to a $5 return for every $1 invested in weed management. There's just an incredible return on investment in weed management and dry beans. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about 30 years and you know how things have changed and, and the contributions you've made and how weed control in edible beans has changed. So uh, thanks a lot for that question, Bern. I think the biggest difference between when I started doing research on weed management in edible beans and weed management in 2023 is when I started, uh, weed scientists talked about weed management in dry beans, and the assumption was that all market classes of dry beans responded similarly to herbicides. And we've really evolved from that time period to today. And today, I think the biggest contribution we've made to weed management and dry beans is farmers have to implement market class specific mm -hmm. weed management programs, depending on whether you have a small seeded market class like white beans, a large seeded market class like kidney beans, or at zuki beans, which are a completely different uh, genus species. Now, Peter, you've shared a, a bunch of thoughts that you want to share with growers, and let's let's kick it off with the first one, and that is, you know, um, pursuit and market class. Yeah, really good question, Burns. So, if you look in publication seventy-five. There's only one rate of pursuit in the dry bean section, and that is 125 milliliters per acre. And in our research, I am totally confident applying pursuit at 125 milliliters per acre in an Azuki bean. Mm -hmm. However, if you're in the Phaseolus vulgaris uh, genus species, I think with the large seeded market classes, so kidney beans, cranberry beans, the highest rate that I'm comfortable with is 100 milliliters per acre. And if you're growing a small seeded market class like white beans, black beans, Otibo beans, the highest rate that I'm comfortable recommending is 75 milliliters per acre. And there's just a range in sensitivity among market classes grown in Ontario to pursue. Mm. What about how it mixes um, from a tank mix perspective? Yeah, and so I, I think, you know, just going on that, if you choose to use a below label rate of pursuit, and let's say it's 75 milliliters in a white bean, you have to add other herbicides to the tank mix to make up for that reduced control by using a below label rate. And farmers have a lot of options that they can tank mix with uh, Pursuit. 
It could be a grass herbicide like uh, Treflan. It could be Prowl. It could be Dual. It could be Frontier. So farmers have a number of different options. And the one that they choose will be dependent on what the weed species composition is in each in each individual field. The application timing, Treflan can only be applied pre-plant incorporated. In contrast, uh, Dual and Frontier can be applied pre-emergence. And so farmers will have to make their choice depending on which market class and the weed species mm. composition in each individual field. What about sensitivity, Peter, especially when it comes to those smaller market classes, those smaller seed market classes? Yeah, really good uh, question. And so I think you can safen your weed management program by adjusting the time of application. If you have herbicides like uh, Dual and Frontier, they are more gentle on the crop when they're applied pre-plant incorporated compared to uh, pre-emergence. The other thing that I think growers have to be aware of is the a bean plant expends energy for every herbicide that you put in the tank. And what you want to do is you want to minimize the number of herbicides in the tank and you want to use them at the lowest rate that's going to give you the commercially acceptable weed control. And by doing that, you're going to uh, minimize the potential for crop injury, especially in tr uh, stressed environments mm. if you have cold, wet conditions after uh, planting. What about adzuki beans? You, you point those out uh, specifically, especially when it comes to managing them when using group threes. Yeah, and so in terms of adzuki beans, I think it's really important that Ontario farmers realize that you manage weeds in an adzuki bean crop very different than you would in the other market classes of dry beans. And so in terms of adzuki beans, they have excellent tolerance to the group three herbicides, Treflan and Prowl. In contrast to that, to that Dual Frontier and Zidua, Zidua is not registered because it's too injurious, but the group 15 herbicides cause far greater injury in a, the adzuki beans than they do in the phaseolus uh, vulgaris market classes of dry beans. And there's lots of other differences between adzuki beans and the other market classes. Adzukis are far more tolerant to pursuit. Mm -hmm. The other market classes are more sensitive. Adzuki beans are far more sensitive to Basgran applied post-emergence. You don't want to do that. You can use Basgran post-emergence in the other market classes. Even a herbicide like Permit, it has a post-emergence registration in Canada. I think you can use it safely mm. in the other market classes of dry beans. You, I think you should never apply permit post-emergence on adzuki beans. So it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, Bern. Uh, <clears throat> we have to develop market class specific mm. weed management programs for edible beans in Ontario. What about tolerance to 2,4-D, Peter? You want to talk about that? Yeah, so we've done a number of uh, trials looking at the tolerance of edible beans to uh, 2,4-D applied pre-plant. We applied 2,4-D 14 days prior to planting the edible beans, seven days, one day, and then we applied it pre-emergence. As you would expect, as you shorten that pre-plant interval, the crop injury goes up. So you have less injury if you apply it 14 days pre-plant. There's an intermediate amount of injury when it's applied seven days, and you get the most injury when you apply it one day pre-plant. And really interesting, the yield response uh, paralleled our crop injury ratings. And so uh, as you shorten that interval between applying the 240 and planting the beans, you get greater, uh, greater yield loss as well. Really interesting in our research where 2,4-D was applied pre-emergence, which I will never recommend. Uh, we got the lowest amount of injury, but I think if you had a rain event that moved that herbicide into the seed zone of the dry beans, there is greater potential for crop injury. And therefore, I think if farmers do want to use 2,4-D, as part of their pre-plant program to control a weed like glyphosate-resistant Canada flea bean, I recommend that they put it on 14 days before planting. Now, Peter, we've talked often, you've always been a fan of a two-pass weed control program. Tell us why. 
Yeah, I, I am a fan of uh, two-pass weed control program, whether that be in corn, soybean, or dry beans. I think Ontario corn, soybean, and dry bean growers should start with their best soil applied herbicide. So what I mean by that is you want to select a herbicide that matches the weed species composition in each individual field. You may have to adjust it based on soil characteristics, whether you have a sandy soil, a high pH soil, low pH soil, and you may have to adjust it based on possibly growing a sensitive crop the following year in the rotation. So, but you want to start with a soil applied herbicide so that when the crop comes up, you have near perfect weed control the day the crop comes out of the ground. Then you scout the field frequently and you apply the herbicide based on the weed species composition in each individual field. I think there's lots of benefits of uh, using a two-pass weed control program. I think you will get the highest yield using that program. In addition to that, if you put down a soil applied herbicide, it opens up your post-emergence weed control application window simply because hopefully you got 85 to 95 percent control with your soil applied herbicide and therefore the timing of your post-emergence herbicide is not as critical. In addition to that, and by using a two-pass weed control program, it will ensure that you use multiple herbicide modes of action in your weed control program, and that will reduce the selection intensity for the evolution of uh, herbicide-resistant weeds. And finally, I think you maximize crop yield and uh, farm profitability by using a two-pass weed control program. Hey, I um, want to ask you for your best recommendation. Now, you've tested every product. You've lined them all up side by side. You know, depending on the situation, obviously, it may vary, but what's your best recommendation? Yeah, so I would uh, recommend that a farmer use a two-pass weed control program. Uh, my starting point for managing weeds in uh, edible beans would be a tank mix of uh, Treflan plus Pursuit. Obviously, you would adjust your rate of pursuit based on the market class. However, I think there's a real fit for the other grass herbicides, whether it's Prowl, Eptam, Dual, or Frontier. For example, if you have Eastern Black Nightshade on the farm, you may choose to go with Dual or Frontier because they have better activity than Treflan or Prowl do on that weed species. If you're using a reduced till system, trifluralin, treflin has to be applied PPI and you have to go to a pre-emergence grass herbicide like uh, Prowl, uh, Dual or Frontier. So there's lots of things that will uh, influence what tank mix you use. And then I think the uh, you have to scout the field and then apply the appropriate post-emergence herbicide to manage the weed escapes. If you have grass weed escapes, we have a lot of options. In edible beans, you can use post, select, venture, or sure to control those grass escapes. If you have broad leaves, if you have predominantly lambs, quarters, and velvet leaf, I'd recommend Bassagran. Mm -hmm. In contrast to that, if you have uh, pigweed and ragweed, I think uh, Reflex would be your herbicide of choice. Well, Peter, hey, it's been great following you over the years and having you on the Edible Bean School and all the schools at Real Agriculture. Thank you for your time today and in the past, and we're going to see you down the road, right? Uh, I do plan to uh, retire on January 31 of 2024. But I really hope to remain active in the uh, weed science area. Well, good stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll chase you down. Thank you.